Ah, Veligen, and welcome to my channel. My name is Ludi, and if you're hungry for some hungry, then you came to the right place. Bet you didn't hear that joke before, did you? Today's video is also sponsored by Surfshark VPN. More about that later on. Today's main topics are going to be how we can crush the Ottomans early game and dominate the entirety of the Balkans within the first 10 years, as well as why Hungary is such a great nation for PUs. It's the mission tree. So to start it off, what we're going to do first off, we're going to go Go to our estate to give out the plus one mana for all three of the estates. Oversight by the clergy, expansion of zealotry to get 5% morale against heretics and heathens, as well as we're going to give out the patronage of the arts for the 15 extra prestige, exclusive trade rights so we make deving up cheaper in pest, and supremacy over the crown. Afterwards, we're going to be selling titles for the extra cash and seize land after that, together with encourage development in pest and dev it up for only 31 mana mana points it is absolutely insane that means also that we are only getting 0.20 autonomy monthly which is a massive compared to the 0.30 that you get normally we'll also be getting the alliance with the Austrians since we are historical friends after all and because we rivaled the Poles and we have a mission here namely the old alliances where you either ally the Poles or you rival them and have a bigger army we went with the rivalry and we're gonna get a bigger army than them which means we're gonna be recruiting the grand company in any of these provinces here the problem with this however is that we start with a regency council so until we actually get an actual leader we're gonna need to uh, be very peaceful however we do get an event to get a leader namely a mr. Janos Huniadi the white knight himself and a general by the way who is either Hungarian or Romanian nobody knows both countries do claim that he was either Hungarian or Romanian well, aside from Austria as an ally we also will be getting a few more alliances around here. Aragon is a great choice if they rival the Ottomans and they did rival in our game the Ottomans. Other amazing choices are Milan since they do have some cores on the Venetians and they might be willing to join our wars against Venice to get back their cores once we get our Croatian cores from the Venetians also. Make sure you get a morale of armies advisor to trade efficiency is good also as well as a production efficiency if you can get these. We've recruited the Grand Company which means we can do the old alliances mission that gives us permanent claims on both Moldova and Wallachia. However, if you do get this mission, there is a chance that the Ottomans are going to proclaim guarantee the nation of Wallachia. So keep that in mind. You might sometimes want to hold off of uh, taking the mission until you get rid of the Regency Council. So as I was saying before, the son of uh, Janos Huniadi, Matthias Corvinus, should be one of our options from the event. And until then, Janos Huniadi is going to be the uh, region, let's say. Make sure you get claims on Bosnia and Serbia too since we will be expanding in this area and hopefully the Byzantines are going to ally Serbia. They did, almost always they do, which means we're going to cobaladry the Byzantines and vassalize them also. The Diet of 1445 has been summoned despite us being so hungry and we will be electing Janos Huniadi as the regent. This is important that you do so. Sadly, the Ottomans have also proclaimed guaranteed Wallachia as I was expecting, but it's not the end of the world. Because they did this, it also means that we can get a second war against the Ottomans after we vassalized Byzantium, a much, much easier war against them. As I mentioned at the start, today's video is sponsored by Surfshock VPN, which is a virtual private network that lets you change your computer's virtual location to anywhere in the world. This allows access and unblocks websites and content which you don't usually have access to. It also encrypts your data to add some extra protection when you're online, keeping your personal info safe and browsing activity hidden. With Surfshark VPN's clean web, you can block off annoying ads and malicious websites so you can enjoy browsing without ads popping up every few minutes and do so safely. If you use public Wi-Fi, the true goldmine for hackers, you can do so safely with a virtual shield between you and them. You can use my code LUDI to get 83% off plus an extra 3 months for free by clicking the link in the description or pinned in the comment below. You also have a 30 day money back guarantee so you can always try it and decide for yourself 
whether you like it or not. January 46, and we can now attack. We got two claims on both Smederevo and Bosnia itself. And we'll be attacking the Serbians. We're going to be cobaladrating the Bosnians and the Byzantines. And with that, we have started our expansion into the south. Make sure you get a new general as well. Hopefully, you get a siege pip with that one. Didn't happen. It's okay. Janos has enough siege pip for the rest of the army here. Of course, focus on carpet sieging everybody fast. Should be a fairly easy war. Remember that once you see the enemy army movement lock you can engage and wipe them out in whatever province you encounter them in this way they cannot retreat from there and they have to fight you with the serbian army out of the way we can now just basically walk through the whole of uh serbia as well as everybody else here we're essentially doing the same thing with the byzantine army they've been movement locked so oh they actually managed to get away because they have a much better movement general i'm guessing they got two movement pips fair enough we still managed to catch up with them eventually so it's all good in the end take note that if it happens that the serbians do not ally the byzantines which can happen of course then you will have to declare war on whichever other allies the byzantines have or if they don't have any allies bordering you then you have to no cb the byzantine it is important that you get the byzantine lands so that we actually feed them back the cores afterward on uh, the ottomans feeding the byzantine cores after the uh, vassalization of byzantium is vital to any campaign in this region since cutting out the ottomans early game is the the only chance you have otherwise having to fight the ottomans after they've gotten tech 5 is almost suicide we were lucky enough to get moldova as a march here moldova gets an event through which either they become a march of poland or of uh, hungary apparently they win with us for some reason this is super super random it's not guaranteed in any way so uh we were just lucky really this means we can get some claims on the poles we can also get the weakened poland mission which gives us a restoration of union cb on the poles as long as they didn't get the union with uh, the lithuanians if they do get the union then in order to get this mission we actually have to take the south part of poland so we're gonna go for the union cb because we will attack them afterwards too and we'll be continuing our war here in the meanwhile we do have a little bit of a situation the ottomans canceled the military access they gave to the byzantines so we have no way of actually accessing the byzantine land now what we're gonna do in this situation is we're gonna be vassalizing bosnia and I'll show you in a few moments why we're vassalizing Bosnia. Also gonna make him cancel the rivalry with Albania. And we're gonna be sending our troops by the border with the Valachians. Visoki is over. That means we can peace him out. There you go. Vassalization. A noise. This means we can use our Bosnian cores on Herzegovina. And we're not gonna cobaladrate the Valachians because that's gonna bring in the Ottomans. But we are gonna attack the um, nation of Herzegovina. Make sure you set up this Chad Lord here in charge of the main army. Use the other ones to take care of the Romanians. And because of this, there is a very high chance that the Ottomans are going to give access to either Valachia or Herzegovina, which means we'll be able to access the Byzantine. As you can see, they did give the military access, just like I said, just like I said. Remember, if you're struggling with military access through a certain nation, always declare more wars, since your enemies are going to ask military access through nations that you don't normally get the access through. Since we have both Moldova and the nation of Bosnia as vassals, we can give out the strong duchies privilege that gives us two extra extra diplo slots namely diplo relation slots as well as lowers the liberty desire in our vassals so that is literally the best privilege out of them all make sure you also improve relations with the bosnians and at the same time get a spy network in byzantium to finish the sieges faster holy mother of god 754 days to siege down constantinople guys if that is not insane i don't know what is we're gonna vassalize them here and we cannot take the province of athens as it is above 100 percent war score but no problems, we will be taking them soon enough. We can attack the nation of Epirus. However, before we do that, we're going to first off peace out the Serbs. Of course, fully annex them, take everything, no coalition of anyone important. This also means we have our second gold mine in Rigomez or Kosovo, as well as the starting gold mine in Hont, which, by the way, you should start upgrading around this time. Encourage development, exploit the development tax here so you actually make it cheaper to dev up this area you want to get it up to 10 development when it comes to your base production for both of these mines we also managed to get another four percent crown lands from taking all of serbian lands for ourselves bring the rest of your army home you likely will be stuck in constantinople if you had your troops here sieging since the ottomans are not going to give you military access so in order to get the military access as i said before we have to likely get the um nation at war with uh, epirus only five years into the game and we've already become a great power and we can 
also take another 5% crown lens, which means we're up to 14% crown lens, which is also why you don't take the estate statutory. We can even develop a few times and we get rid of the autonomy debuff from the first five years of the game, son. Sadly, Cyprus would join in this, so this war might drag on for a little bit longer than I'd like it to, because we don't actually have a fleet. So without a fleet, it's gonna be troublesome. We can get access through Athens, however, which is great. Let's see. Oh, perfect. We can even get access through the Ottomans now. That is actually amazing. We also have our truce finished with the Ottomans and everybody else around us, which means we can attack the Ottomans now. We'll wait once uh, they cross on over to the Kendari side, and then afterwards we're gonna make our move here. As I said before, 1450, and uh, we got Matias Corvinus as our absolute Chad leader here. After you get the uh, Hungarian succession, you can get some claims on the Bohemian lands too. Under normal circumstances, I would attack the Ottomans and get back the cores like I just mentioned earlier, but because I noticed that the uh, Poles have gone to war with the Teutons and they have lost a few battles, I am actually going to attack the Poles instead to restore the Union over them. Let's do that. Let's quickly get the Poles under our thumb and then afterwards we can uh, rush back into the Ottoman lands and take them out as well. We also need to wait until we peace out the nation of Epirus for five years. Astria also cancelled with us, but it's not a massive deal. They do have a domineering stance over us, which is why they cancelled, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they will attack. The Polish war went very, very smoothly. In fact, I crushed their army in just a single battle, and I've sieged down the rest of the country, so I even can enforce my PU on them right now if I don't go for the money, but I want the money also because I am a greedy bastard I guess you could say I'm a little bit hungry. So anyway, whilst I'm doing that, I just realized that the Ottomans attacked Albania. So I want to attack the Ottomans right now, as this is a great chance for me to take as much as I can from them, since uh, I have the Venetian fleets helping me out also. Before I do that, however, I have to piece these guys out, and I can finally do the whole shebang here. Daryagu can also cord this up for myself, and let's bring our troops by the border with the Ottomans. It's Dewa's full time, boys. Let's go. Let's set our war goal to any of the provinces that we can get early on, such as Ciro's, and let's absolutely crush these Ottoman scumbags. The scumbags, man. The scumbag. Oh, come on. I don't have military access here. Seriously. Give me military access, Albania, so I can kill these guys for you. Really? Really, Albania? Massive kick. I feel like the Teutons are never gonna peace out the Poles, so I'm just gonna do it myself, and even though it means that I'm gonna be in a war against the Teutons, I really don't care. Actually, what just happened? They just white peace. Okay, that's something new. So we can also call in now the Aragonese since we got the 10 favors we need and that's gonna be of help because they do have a fleet that we can use against the Ottomans. If you do get the uh, Janos Hunyadi path with Matthias Corvinus as your heir, then you're gonna get the Black Army, which is a unique modifier for uh, Hungary, which essentially gives you a special mercenary army, the Black Army. They are based in Pest and you can hire them as soon as you get this event. Five discipline and are 25% cheaper than regular troops despite having the five discipline. I can already see the big problem being the fact that it's both me and Albania sieging down the Ottomans, so I'm likely gonna have to wait for the Albanian war to finish and uh, after they peace out I do my peace deal. So after a short war here we're gonna be piecing them out. Albania was uh, smart enough to peace out I guess but they lost the war somehow so despite the fact they had like half of the Ottomans owned they still lost anyway AI gonna be AI we're gonna take these lands from the Ottomans to cuck them over from getting access to the Balkan areas completely and we're letting them keep Selenik and Edirne since in the next war it's gonna be easy to get war score by occupying the capital quickly and one of their forts we didn't fight too many Ottoman armies and we let them just siege down our stuff whilst we siege theirs which is the smartest approach since fighting the Ottomans means we would have lost a lot of troops in the process because the Ottomans do have significantly better troops than ours. It's only been 12 years and we already have most of the Balkans as well as Poland in a PU under us together with Mazovia. This is why Hungary is secretly one of the most overpowered nations in the game. We're also going to be going for new rivals now. We're going to go for the Venetians because we do want to attack the Venetians and they've been excommunicated so we might even attack sooner than we would have otherwise. Our truce with the Ottomans is going to expire in 72. We are going to attack these guys once our truce expires sooner. I believe it's in 
63? Yes, 63. That means nine years early we can attack the Ottomans a second time. I've also released the nation of Bulgaria from the two provinces we took from the uh, Ottomans because, of course, this means in the next war against the Ottomans, we're going to take all the Bulgarian lands and the rest of the uh, Byzantine land. So in the meanwhile, because we have four years to spare and I already got bored, we're going to be attacking Lithuania, but we're going to attack it via the Venotion. So we're going to call in Aragon and Milon, and we are going to take our course back for our beloved Croatian personal union. Let's go, boys. It's time to take our stuff back, eh? To make sure we have a proper siege general in charge of these armies, and uh, the other boys here can handle themselves against a few tiny, puny Lithuanians. By the way, guys, remember how I said that you should not go for the estate statutory event that gives you crownlands? We already have 20% crownlands within the first few years of the game. In fact, I've had it for the past two years as well, so we don't really need to go for that horrible, horrible estate statutory, no matter what anybody else says. We will be piecing out Lithuania and just going for the money. We actually get 444 of this, even though we have both of our allies in the war. We're doing this because we need the troops on the western front. Sadly enough, the Venetians have murked up like crazy, despite us pretty much owning their whole country here. They are still being a nuisance. You thought the siege of Constantinople was bad? Tried the siege of Treviso, my boy. Treviso is really annoying. In any case, we've now uh, have most of the stuff that we can take. We're not gonna go for Venice City itself because I'm not in the mood to continue with this war. I'm gonna take all of these cores here and can I take this as well? Perfect. That is absolutely perfect. Coalition wise, almost nobody would join into this and after one month has passed, this is gonna tick down even more. We can take a little bit of cash too or better yet, we can take war reps which is even better since we take all the war reps and we don't have to share it with our uh, allies. Okay, now we can bring our boys by the border again since we are going to be attacking the Hortoman once more. And with all of these islands here, we can concentrate and core them up. We've just integrated in the Bosnians and we will be attacking now Athens because Athens is also a core of the Byzantines. But most importantly, it is because we want to actually take the city of Ragusa and this other city here in Scutari. It looks ugly, guys. I like pretty borders. I like pretty borders. Pretty borders. So this should be fairly easy, though. We've already taken out their armies, and I'm not even going to use my main army, to be fair. I'm just going to use the mercenaries. I don't want to waste my mad power pool. And we've gotten our first loan in this entire session. I didn't get any loans up until now, and I can probably just sell titles instead of getting another loan and still don't need to worry about autonomy. Fair enough. We'll just uh, keep that loan, and if need be, we can get more loans via the estates here. We can also cancel the patronage of the arts. However, I'm not going to do that because I want to seize land again after this short war is over. And this insanely short war is over. Finally, we can fully annex the nation of Ragusa, even though we're taking a little bit of extra aggressive expansion because we did not co-belligerate them. It's fine. As long as we keep out the Ottomans from the whole situation, it's all good since the Ottomans were guaranteeing them. We want the Ottomans in the Valachian War, however. So it looks like they're still not piecing me out because... Cyprus is still in the war. Looks like I'm gonna have to wait for a little while since I do want to take uh, lands before I attack the Valachians. We have eventually pieced out Athens and we've taken some more crownlands as well as sold some titles and we now also can pay off our only loan that we ever took as well as because the Poles have integrated Mazovia we get the permanent plus one diplomats and cultures promoted which means we can accept Polish and Serbian or whatever else we want to accept as accepted culture. We're ready for war as well so let's declare the war we're gonna set Severin as the war target and now it's us against the Ottoman with the Valachian vassal or actually they're just proclaimed guaranteeing they're not a vassal it should be a fairly easy war the fact that we have one extra diplomat now is also gonna be of massive help to us you sir are watching a Romanian playing as Hungarians killing Romanians I'm not sure how I feel about that I'm really not sure how I feel about that we've done as much damage as we could have done to the Ottomans we basically wiped out their armies and they've started recruiting again of course probably janissaries but still we only want to have a five years truce with them or six years so i'm going to take a little bit of cash here and piece them out as in the next war i'm going to be feeding my uh, vassals the cores that they have that being said i'm not going to be so uh, lenient with the valachians and i am going to fully annex them coalition wise almost nobody joining in this and we're taking all the cash that we can take too booyah now we're going to be concentrating development and we'll be coring all of this as this 
is going to be integral part of the Hungarian nation. Destroy the fort too, and we can do another one of our missions here, namely control Valachia and Serbia and Bosnia. So there you go, a buttload of missions in one. We can use our money to also adopt the Renaissance, and as such, we don't need to pay extra institution tech penalties. I'm seriously enjoying this campaign, guys. Like, we've actually managed to get all of the Balkans and Poland, and with our mission tree, we're actually going to be attacking the nation of Bohemia up next. If you guys want to see a mid-game guide for this nation, that means me continuing this save. Leave a like if we get 5,000 likes for this video, and I know it's kind of tough to do. Probably will not happen, but at least I have to mention 5k likes, and we continue this with the mid-game guide, showing how we can get almost all of Europe PU'd very early within the game. Up next, I want to talk about the idea Ideas, and of course I've already set up the quantity ideas that really helped me out in my expansion. Next I likely will be going for religious ideas because I am in the process of going orthodox. More than half of my provinces are already orthodox and I will be switching over my capital to orthodoxy. I am currently converting this province and I only pay 8% of my missionaries so it's gonna take like a hundred years. I'm doing this so that I can uh, spawn in orthodox rebels so quantity religious followed by influence ideas which gives me minus 25 diplo annexation cost helping out with integrating all of these vassals and all the other PU members that I'm gonna get I'm doing influence first before diplomatic because I get one extra diplomat from my missions if you remember we got one until the end of the game from the Jagiellonian Union and because of that I'll be going influence as my fourth idea set rather than third I want to thank sir Shark VPN for sponsoring this video. You can find the link in the description. And until the next one, have a great day, guys. I also want to give a very special thank you to all of my patrons and channel members, as well as my Twitch subscribers. Thank you so much, guys, for all the support. I wouldn't be able to make these videos without you.